Okay, so here we are in uh, week eight, Tuesday the 9th of March. So just two more weeks of teaching. Uh, we've got this, uh, this week we've got website, we're going to talk about design and content. And in the workshop on Friday, I'm going to talk briefly about the business plan. And then next week, as you know, it's team presentation week. And then the week after that, week 10, the final week of the spring semester, I will give you part two of website and business plan. <coughs> so, excuse me. So the idea is that we get all of this teaching and preparation and, um, you know, sort of breaking down the mission and describing it before Easter. And then that will give you a, a good number of uh, weeks uh, to uh, actually focus on the mission itself. Slide two. Let's just talk about this. Let's understand what our destination is. So uh, the destination is uh, assessment two, website and business plan. Hang on a second, we've got another latecomer. Assessment two, uh, the destination, the deadline is, as you know, way down the track. It's April the 19th which by my reckoning is about 40, 40 days away. Um, so you've got loads of time, or so it appears, but of course you have to balance this with your other assessments, uh, which are coming up soon uh, in the other modules. Um, and you also, at some point, everybody needs a break. I know we can't go anywhere, but it's really important that everybody take some time out over Easter to rest and recuperate. And then hopefully when we come back after Easter, things will be appreciably different and we may even meet, who knows, who knows. So I sent an email yesterday um, about the, the campus, the university plans for um, reducing the COVID restrictions. Um, so have a look at that. It's in, I actually sent it via the um, MA Journalism Programme site I don't know if that makes a difference, but make sure you read that email. So, um, so basically, it's we're going to continue as we are until Easter, and then we will let you know after Easter um, if we're um, actually going to be meeting in real life. Haifa, you have a question. Yeah, well, in your email, you mentioned uh, the usage of the studio. So, is it possible that before Easter, I can go and record in the? In the film, uh, studio. Yeah, I, I think so. If you read it again, Haifa, from what I remember, it says that you can get access to the editing suites, but you have... Do you remember, I remember something about the lots of restrictions, and I'm, I wanted to make sure that I can physically go there. Yeah, I, as I understand it, it's not really my territory, Haifa. I don't get involved in the technology side of things, but it, just read it very carefully. I, I think it says you need to contact somebody. There's somebody's email address. You need you need to do it, but I, I think my the short answer to your question, Haifa, is I think so. I think you can, yeah. But, but you see, I, I'm, not, I'm not avoiding your question because I simply don't know the answer because it's not really my department. The thing is about universities, as I'm sure you all understand, everybody has their own responsibility. And it's it's not part of my remit to uh, get involved in that sort of stuff. So read the email again and, and see what uh, what it says about getting access. I think you can, but you need to follow a certain... Universities are all about procedure, even in the best of times, you know. OK, so um, let's go back to the website and business plan. So you've got plenty of time to do this um, on paper. You know, it, it is six weeks away. Um, but I strongly suggest that you start making some progress on it now. As I always say, please don't do the, the you know, the BA way of working, which is you leave it until April the 17th and then you start thinking about it and then you get into a big panic because you realise there's actually quite a lot of work involved. Um, so I, I'm really encouraging you this week to start thinking about website and business plan, even though it's a long way down the track. Now, if you have any doubts about what is expected, um, there is a guidance document on Moodle. It's a PDF. I'm sure you can find it. It's on the JEE page and it explains in great detail what you need to do and when. So it's 20% of the mark. Um, we're going to we mark it the website and business plan as a whole 
um, so you don't get separate marks for website and a separate mark for the business plan. What we're looking for more than anything else are those four things there. We're looking for coherence. So your website and business plan have to make sense. It ha there has to be a plan involved. You have to position yourself successfully as a competent, confident and creative journalist. In the business plan in particular, we are looking for detail. So instead of writing something like, you know, I intend to get a job in the media, you need to tell us who you're aiming at, which publications, is it print, is it broadcast, is it online, what type of journalism, you know? So be as specific as you can. Now, with a business plan, it doesn't really matter at this point um, if, you know, if it doesn't come to fruition. And most, I hate to tell you this, folks, but in my experience, most business plans do not come, in, come to fruition. I've written numerous business plans over the years for myself, usually for a bank loan or something like that. And even the bank manager says, look, you know, it just needs to be coherent. It doesn't need to come to fruition to be successful. So the idea is that you plot a future. You plot a course between here and where you want to get to. So we need detail. Don't just say make vague statements. If you make vague statements, you will get marked down. And don't forget, this is your plan. This is your future. So when I spoke a few weeks ago about plan A and plan B, do you remember that document? The purpose of that was to get you thinking about business plan. So ideally, you should have two strings, two approaches, two possible directions in your business plan. One that you're really passionate about, but it might be a niche interest. Uh, you know, so you might want to be a tennis journalist, which is very, very focused. Um, but then you need a plan B, which is, a, is an alternative that you might do. Business journalism is the classic one, I always say, because there is such a shortage of business journalists out there. Um, you'll also get marked for creativity. So instead of just doing what we've spoken about in class and, you know, the job websites that I've given you, you need to go out and find your own and think about, for example, if you're going to take the freelance approach, come up with magazines and publications and TV shows and so on that you could work on. And it also needs to be viable. So as you know, I always recommend to young students that you aim as high as you can, you know, reach for the stars and all that. But at the same time, it needs to be viable. So if you say that you want to be BBC political editor next year, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this, but it's probably going to take you a bit longer than that. You know, so it, it needs to be doable. It needs to be plausible. It needs to be viable. So more than anything else, when I mark your website and business plan, so I, I'm going to mark them as a coherent whole. So they're both like, they're like two sides of the same coin. So the, the website is basically saying where you are now. This is you as a person now. This is what you've done. This is what you do. This is where you're being productive. Your business plan is future. It's a plan. So it's the website is now and business plan is the future. And what I'm going to do is look at all of that and basically assess if you're competent and professional and if you're well placed to actually start your career path. So it does involve quite a lot of work. It's got to be coherent. It's got to make sense. It's got to have the detail. It needs some creativity and it needs to be viable. Slide three, let's have a closer look at the criteria. So this is for the website. So I'm going to talk about website today <clears throat> and I'll talk more about business plan on Friday. So everything from now on is website, website, website. Now what it says in the criteria, and I've highlighted those four really important words at the top, a professional standard promotional website. Professional standard. So when somebody sees your website, don't forget with a website the whole world can read it including potential employers and potential freelance clients. Um, so it needs to be professional standard. And the whole point of this is to promote you as a, a, a communication or a professional, a professional communicator, whether it's journalist or a social media specialist or a PR person, doesn't really matter. You, you know, you, if you want to do PR, you can position yourself as a PR. I'd recommend that you didn't because we haven't really taught you much about PR. So I would say, you know, journalist is the way that you should go. Professional standard promotional website designed by the student. I say that because a few years ago, I didn't say that. And somebody got one of their mates, who's a very good web designer, to design it for them. And I kind of admired their, um, 
their creativity with their, you know, getting a professional to do it. But, but, but I have to specify that it needs to be you personally that does it. On a suitable hosting platform. Now you want to make some, might want, want to make some notes here. Because if you want, they're, they're advertised on TV. You may have noticed them, some of these companies. And they're also advertised online, obviously. Um, I've listed three there, WordPress, Wix, or Moonfruit. There's another one called GoDaddy. Yeah, I'll type it down, it's a really weird name. Uh, but it, it's a very high profile on, um, on TV. So check out GoDaddy as well, and there might be others. There might be others. So you're looking for a hosting platform. And, and the way that it works, I don't know if anybody's done this, but you basically go along to the platform and you fill in a few lines, you know, the name of your website, and you choose a template. And before you know it, you've made a first basic uh, website. The way that they work is that you get, it's like, it's, it's very common online. You get the free version, which is not that brilliant, um, with no problems at all. But if you want a bit more functionality, and if you want a, a bit more um, sort of download, you know, the, the number or the number of images or videos that you can put on your website, you have to pay a bit more for it. So you need to check out what's available. And it's your choice, not mine, not mine, your choice. So you need to spend some time looking around the various uh, providers and then deciding based on your budget, you might not want to spend anything. I suggest that you do because it's worth, say, five quid a month to get a, a good stand, a, a good package, basically. So you need to decide what you're prepared to pay and what you need and which of those platforms works best for you. Now, if you remember um, last week, a couple of weeks ago, when Charla visited us and I said to Charla, Charla, which platform did you use? And she said Wix. And as you will see a bit later, Charla's website is pretty good. So Wix might be a good starting point. Okay, so the site will include a minimum of five pages with an about page and at least four more that contain examples of the student's own original journalism. It will be assessed according to the following uh, um, five criteria. So most of them, criteria one, two, four, uh, sorry, one, two, four and five, they're really what you would say design. They are design elements. It's only the content really which is actually the words the words that you publish. So visual impact is a design issue. Does it use colour and space effectively? Does it look professional? Is there an appropriate combination of images, words and other elements? Is it clear who owns the website and what he or she does? And again, I put that in there because in the past, you know, I've looked at student websites and I kind of, it takes me 20 seconds to figure out what it is. So you need to be very clear and upfront about what your website's all about. Photographs and other images. Does the website include the appropriate quantity and quality of photos and other images? Other images might be graphics. They might be charts, uh, you know, diagrams, whatever it might be. Are they suitably cropped and edited? So in other words, are the images professional? The author's own photographs should be used if possible, but you can use royalty-free images uh, as well. So uh, Creative Commons, you probably spoke about that in law with Sean. See how all these modules link together. So Sean spoke about copyright, so make sure that you don't infringe any copyright. All photographs must be labelled with a credit, so you need to say where the photograph comes from. So if it's your photo, it's copyright Gary James Merrill or whatever your name is. Uh, content, these are the five mandatory pages and any other pages. Ooh, hang on a second, my batteries are going again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're right, Haifa. And, and, you know, you'd hope it'd be professional, right? Because Naomi is a... Uh, have you heard of Naomi before, uh, Haifa? I think I've heard of some of her work when it comes to... Yeah. yeah. Well, for 20, 20 years ago, she was like one of the biggest sort of newest authors. And she wrote a lot of critical work about globalisation. Her favourite famous book was a book called No Logo. Um, which made a massive impact about 1999. Um, I see what you mean, though, because if you like, I, I, as what you say, Haifa, if you scroll down, it's a long page, right? The first page. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah and that's one of the principles of web design. You should, I, I, I was always taught that you should keep the home page just like literally one page. Don't make it where you have to scroll down and down and down to, to read it. Um, so when I designed my freelance website, I, I used that principle and I just had it as a, 
a snapshot of me. But you're absolutely right. It's you say monochromatic hypha. That there is a hint of blue. I think. It, I don't know about your screen, but on my screen, um, the background to Naomi's. Um, photograph is a, as a hint of blue. It looks grey blue, but like you say, it's really logically organised. It's professional. It's straightforward. It's eye catching. It's easy to navigate. So she ticks all of the boxes. Thanks, Haifa. Anybody else? Give me another website, folks. Anybody? Um, hmm. Oh, sorry, you had two people speaking at once. I think it was Shannon and Giovanni. Giovanni, I think you were slightly first. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I've seen the, the John Tilger one. Mm. Um, uh, I think, I don't know, it looks more like of a, a news website rather than yeah. a, a journalist, like a personal website. You're right, it does. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing that my eyes the most yeah and i've also seen the angela Huli one um but i don't know about this one because it, it doesn't look to me as um professional as the others which, which one sorry sorry uh, giovanni which one's this you're talking about now the angela angela's right one. okay yeah I'm glad she's not here to hear you say it, that it's not very professional. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, let's... Just, no, I know what you mean. Go on, but carry on. Just because of... Um, just because of the colours. Right. Very vibrant. It doesn't look like a... Right. You no know, web. OK, thanks, Giovanni. I'm, gl I'm glad you made those comments because... Now, now don't forget here, folks, um, Angela and John, they're both writing for their audience and they have different audiences. So if you, if you have a quick... Well, you'll find more, out more about Angela on Friday, but, but she does a lot of sort of lifestyle journalism. I mean, it's not, it's not all lifestyle, but she writes about food and she writes about culture and she writes about identity and those sorts of subjects. Um, so she, and she's typically writing for a younger audience. So you're right to say that it, the phrase you used was, it doesn't look as professional, I think. I, don't worry, I won't tell her that. But look at how Angela... Yeah, you, I didn't read that, so it was just the first impression. Okay, no, 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 don't, don't, don't worry about it, Giovanni. I, I know what you mean, I know what you mean. So, so Angela's design is, Giovanni, it's more playful, isn't it? It's more sort of artistic and a bit random. And so she's using sort of more colour than John uses. She's using yeah. more. She's using more colour than Naomi uses. But also, and look at her language as well. So she says, "Hello, Schwame." I don't know that second word, "Ola," and the last word I think is "Ni Hao," which. which well, what's the word "Schwame"? What's that? Anybody know? Uh, it's not Italian, right, Giovanni? Be buongiorno, wouldn't it? I guess. Okay, but but she's clearly writing for an international, culturally sophisticated audience. Uh, so her website is it's written very neatly for for her readership. So the first photograph there is of Chinese Chinese dumplings, and you compare that to John. John is a very serious journalist. He writes about war reporting. And the other thing to remember, Giovanni, is that John is much older than than uh, Angela. John's journalism goes 50 years back, <coughs> so he's got a lot to say. And Angela, I think she's in her early 30s, so she doesn't have as much. Um, but you're absolutely right, John Pilger's website does look like a news website. It looks like a newspaper. N not necessarily anything wrong with that, Yeah. Um, you know, but, but it is a, a different look and feel. Any more comment, Giovanni? Do you want to come back on that? Uh, on which one? Well, either one, because I've kind of, I've given a critique of your critique, if you like. So, so do you want to come back on? Yeah, okay. Um, no, I, uh, it's similar to the, I was just in the Naomi Klein one. Mm. They're both similar because you have to scroll yeah. all the way down. Right, the, the yeah. And that's, yeah, and that's annoying, and Haifa mentioned that, and I don't like it either. So if you might all want to write down, folks, don't make your pages very long so that you have to scroll down somebody once told me that the ideal page length it should not be more if you press page down on your laptop if you do that more than three times then the page is too long that's what somebody told me many years ago and that's not a bad principle so three page downs it should be the maximum and that's kind of sufficient for a 1000 word article 
you know. Um, anybody else want to throw something in here? Comments, thoughts, critique? Shannon, did you want to say something? I think you were next. Uh, um, Gary Young's page. I find oh, right. Yeah. Can you put the link up, please, Shannon? Yeah. This is the Guardian journalist, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go on, tell us about Gary's page whilst we're, we're logging on to it. What do you think? Okay. Um, so it seems quite good to be honest. I yeah. I haven't got too much criticism for it. Um, it's all his recent articles have been posted. And then he's got a separate section for his books. Yeah. Um, I, he, perhaps he has too many tabs at the top because if you go into like the archives, I don't know if that's really necessary. Yeah. To be honest. Wow, that's a lot of work. He's he's been around a long time. This guy. You know. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. done quite a lot actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the image in the lower left-hand side of the corner looks. I don't know if it really fits the style of, of the page. The picture of him. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I, I know Gary Young, well, not personally, but I, I know his work. He's very prolific. He's been around a long time, very highly regarded. Um, but And I've not seen his website before. But the, the thing that stands out, um, everybody, really, I was just going to address you then, Shannon, but everybody, the thing that stands out, hopefully what you've noticed is there's lots of similarities between these websites. So you, there, there are slightly different colours, but, but they do tend to use the same principles, don't they? They use straight lines, they use greys, blacks and whites, um, and, and they reflect what the, the journalist is all about. So, so that's more than anything else what we can learn from these quick snapshots of other people's pages. In other words, there is, there is a certain way of doing a promotional website that works. So, so what I'm looking for, folks, is I'm not looking for you to, 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 to dazzle me with radical design concepts. You know, because let's go back to the PowerPoint. Thanks for your contributions. Hi, Fer Giovanni, Shannon. We're going to have to move on. Sorry, folks, if you wanted to say something. So slide five. Um, look at Naomi's. Uh... So when it comes to the pictures, we have to uh, put on our website. Well, I see uh, some of the examples from the students, they put uh, pictures from weddings or just taking a selfie. Well, that's OK. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll talk about the student websites in a moment, Haifa. I'll talk about the student websites in a moment. Let's just go back to the, um, let's just go back to um, Naomi. So slide five, Naomi, um, one of my favorite journalists. So the points I've put at the bottom, th these are essentials. Can you tell quickly, quickly tell what the journalist does? So immediately we can see from J Naomi's website, journalist, author, filmmaker, activist, and she's got a short paragraph that she's an award-winning bestseller. So we know within 30 seconds exactly what she does. How is the content organized? Well, you've got words, you've got an image, and you've got space. Don't forget space. You don't have to cram every piece of space with an image or words, you know? And space can actually be, be very powerful. And I often think about space. If you like music, music, when it's silent is actually really power powerful. It sounds ironic when music is not playing, and then that provides a contrast for when music is playing. You know, a quiet section in a song or whatever it might be. It's extremely powerful, same with design. Um, so think about how the content's organized. It's rational, you've got your navigation at the top. 99% of websites have navigation at the top of the page because that's where we expect it to be. Sometimes it's on the left. Um, it's, uh, and then think about how the text and images and space and colour is used. So it's quite a subdued colour. Uh, John Pilger's page, slide six, as Giovanni said, it looks more like a newspaper. It's quite dense, but let's just remember that John's been a journalist for over 50 years and he's very passionate about his war reporting and polit political reporting, so we can give him some credit for that. Um, number seven, I don't know if anybody looked at George Monbiot, famous Guardian journalist, but his website, slide seven, is extremely basic. It's just black, white and red, and with a small picture of him. He's an environmentalist, maybe it's part of his, uh, you know, sort of philosophy that more is, a less is more. You know, so there's no reason that you shouldn't do it in a, in a sort of minimalist form like that as well. And slide eight, um, with the, 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 the journalism students or your graduates, uh, so Francesca and Christiana, slide eight, they, they took a very similar approach. Can I just say, actually, all of these websites on this page, uh, they all scored highly. 
against the same criteria. Now, I don't remember exactly what they got. I think, I shouldn't really say this, but I think Francesca and Christiana, they were late 60s, I think. And I think Charla just got above 70 because she added a little bit more design, you know, sort of creativity. And, uh, and she followed the brief a bit more closely. But please don't quote me on that. But, uh, but let's put it this way. I wouldn't give you these examples if they weren't particularly good ones. So you can use these as... Um, uh, to a point as 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 role models for your own work and um, the other point here is to notice that i did a screenshot of a screen grab of charla's on the left and that's what she submitted in 2019 and her most recent version on the right very similar in terms of layout in terms of design she's tweaked it so she's gone from journalist to journalist producer etc she's changed her photograph she's changed the text slightly but look at their text you can learn so much from following in the footsteps of your predecessors um, so I mean don't copy them precisely because that shows a lack of originality uh, but there are certain principles that work very well um, and they work across all of these websites not just the student ones the graduate ones but also the professional ones and then uh, Angela Hoy's uh, slide 9 um, as Giovanni said, it, it, it takes a different approach to the other ones. It's a bit more playful, it's a bit more colourful. But I, I think it's a, a, a good um, example because Angela's very strong branding, you know, she certainly stands out and that's half of the battle, isn't it? And she's using kind of abstract shapes rather than the straight lines on the other websites. Um, but don't forget who her um, audience is. So if you have a click through her website, it might be a good idea actually because she's coming on on um, on um, Friday and a lot of her, her work like I said is lifestyle and uh, and food and culture and so on so that that image is kind of appropriate for what she's doing um, I'm gonna have to move on folks because as always we're running out of time we probably have to do half of this on Friday but don't worry we'll get there um, so slide 10 assessment and business plan April the 19th um, and I really recommend just to reiterate that you start working on it before you really start moving on journalism project. We, we're still sorting out the final dates of journalism project and Adam will let you know shortly when it all begins. But please don't let this project, assessment two, blend into the journalism project. Once you start the journalism project, you will be totally focused on it. So I recommend, strongly recommend that you make serious progress um, as soon as possible and no, but notice my comment there some of your content that you put on your website can be submitted for journalism projects so it makes sense to put a lot of effort into this I'll talk more about that another time so what we're going to do between now and uh, the end of class on Friday is talk about website design website content and we'll do the business plan um, separately so slide 11 slide 11 Website content, and again, we've done some preparation on this already. If you remember, in week one of JEE, I suggested that you set up a table, a Word document, where you make a list of potential website content. The brief says five pages minimum. Um, now, every year it happens, that, <laughs> and I guess I would have done the same thing if I were a young student. Most, some students, say most, but some students, they think, right, how can I do the bare minimum? How can I just do five pages? I would suggest that you do more. The university regulations stop me from, uh, from specifying more. Five pages equates to about 1,500 words, apparently. So, so that we're constrained by the university regulations. Um, if you've got more work and if it's of decent quality and it says who you are, I would try and increase that number uh, from five upwards, maybe towards ten. But I'm looking for, the rules say I'm looking for a minimum of five. One of them needs to be an about page, which we've spoken about already with the 150 word profile, etc. So you need four more pages. And if you think about it, it's, it's not that steep a mountain to climb because you've already got some work you've got two articles from feature writing um, you've got three articles from your journalism portfolio um, I think you've got three articles for social media and data journalism and you've got two elements to digital reportage or you will have you will have audio the podcast and a video um, so you've got plenty out there already and if you've got stuff that you've published years ago or in your undergraduate degree or that you've published elsewhere you can include that as well at the end of the day you need to decide what goes on there 
think about th this is where it comes back to the business plan where do you want your career to go so if you want to be a war reporter your website should be war reporting from start to finish because it emphasizes that's your interest and that's what you're good at and make sure the comment on the box on the, on the right hand side don't just copy and paste your feature articles onto your website. Make sure that you incorporate the feedback that Adam gave you on your feature writing work or that Juan gave you on journalism portfolio, etc. Make sure you incorporate the feedback, feedback, check it, double check it, improve it if you possibly can, and then publish it. Don't forget, this is your shop window to the world. And the last thing you want is badly written, badly structured, inaccurate work in your shop window. So it's down to you to check it and double check it. But the good news is that you already, without knowing it perhaps, you already have some good content to put up there. You need to decide what, whether it's good enough. Only you can decide whether it's good enough. Slide 12, some top tips. Okay, now as always with design, it's like art. There is some subjectivity. So you might get your mark back and say, well, I like those colors, Gary, but you didn't like them. Um, and I guess there is an element of that, but certain things work and certain things don't work. And as you've seen by looking at the professionals and these young journalists like Charla and Angela, um, they keep it simple. They don't overload the website. They don't have crazy shapes and designs and, and patterns, with Angela possibly being an exception. Um, they just keep it simple. They organise the content rationally with the navigation at the top and they divide it in a rational way. Um, the other thing that you need to do so is obviously is is by following what the professionals do so the the thing to do is that you learn how to design by doing it so in the old days at another university we used to have a specific web design class and i would spend 12 weeks looking over people's shoulders and students shoulders and advising them about changing colors and shapes and all that but these days the best way to do it is basically just find yourself a web platform use some photographs and some words that you have already and just play around with it just mess around with it change the colors experiment with layouts and templates that's how you learn design don't forget top tip there should be zero grammatical spelling and punctuation errors and put yourself in the position of somebody who's never met you before so when you start applying for jobs and internships you will have your website address on there and the person who's reading your application will click on the link and that will be their first impression of you so you need to make an immediate professional impact. So it needs to be easy to navigate and plenty of space and attractive and not using colors that are too bright. This is your shop window to the world. And the way that you do it, folks, is by basically getting stuck into a, a web design platform and, and practicing and trying it and, and experimenting and seeing what works, but all the time remembering how the professionals do it because there is a certain way of doing it as you will as you've seen and if you look at more journalistic websites you will find something similar so in the last 10 minutes let's start making a, a bit of impact we probably won't have time to do all of them in terms of web design so we're going to talk about content and design so those are the two elements of the web um, uh, part of the assessment in terms of the design there are what seven six six elements uh, design elements key elements of a website and i'm going to go through those one by one and so just reflect on what you've seen already from the professional websites and the uh, the graduate websites so first point slide 14 layout now what i still do when i'm designing websites and it might be a little bit stone age for your liking but what i do is i sit down literally with a pen and paper and draw a sketch and this kind of goes back to i guess many years ago when I first designed a website over 20 years ago now and, and the software was not very intuitive so the, the thing to do just like if you're building a, a new house the first thing you do is a sketch just simple straight lines you know top left top right bottom left bottom right the text is going to go here image over here navigation there and that gives you a rough idea of, of where you want to get to the, the new way of doing it is to you find a web platform like Wix or GoDaddy and you'll notice that they have templates but I've highlighted the word suitable because don't go that make sure that you read the template carefully because some of the templates will be for online shops you know if you're selling I don't know artwork or um, whatever it might be so make sure you use a template that is suitable for what you're doing don't just choose it randomly because it looks nice 
Next point, think about verticals and horizontals, with the exception of Angela, with her kind of semi-chaotic shapes and patterns, all of the journalists that we looked at use vertical lines and horizontal lines. That's what human beings expect. That's how books are laid out. That's how newspapers are laid out. That's how the BBC website is laid out. We expect websites to be verticals and horizontals. So don't have sloping text, you know, or, or um, lots of sort of random circles and triangles and all, all that sort of stuff, because it will just confuse the viewer. Next point, make sure that you're consistent across pages. So your home page should look pretty much the same as every other page that comes after it. So that's branding, isn't it? Just like the every subsequent page of the of Vogue magazine kind of looks pretty similar to the previous one. Make sure that your name and your profession, however you want to describe yourself, freelance journalist, journalist, war, war journalist, fashion correspondent, whatever it might be, make sure it's prominent so that the reader can immediately see who you are and what you're about. And, and yeah, state your specialism. If it's, you know, remember what we did in uh, week three, I think it was, I was talking about um, uh, career options. You know, so you can work in broadcast or you can work online or you can work in print or you can work in as a business journalist. Make, make your specialism obvious, you know, so that people know who they're dealing with from the outset. So that's some general ideas on layout, general ideas on. So that's how the, the, the page is put together, what the elements of a page are. Um, second point is colours, colours, slide 15. So I know that we've all got our favourite colours, but I'm challenging you to reconsider whether some colours actually work on a website. Don't forget, first point, journalism needs to be easily consumed. So the colours need to be, you know, sort of complementary, but they also need to be conducive to consuming. Think about a newspaper. Think about websites like the BBC website. It's black text on a white background. That is the standard classic combination. Uh, saying that, my own website is white text on a black background, and a web designer, a professional web designer, did tell me off about that once. But I still like it, and I don't use it that much, so that's my defence. So black text on a white background, you can't go wrong with that. Please don't use what I call wishy-washy colours. Um, so I know that some people like pink. There is a place for pink. Uh, I always think dessert when I think about pink. I think about cakes and custard and things like that. Um, pinks don't really work. Pale yellow doesn't work. Pastel blue doesn't work. You might think that it does, but I, but I, I think if we put it to the test, I think most people would say that they do, don't work. They might work if you're selling, I don't know, lingerie or something, you know, because colours or baby clothes, because those colours are, are what you would associate with those sorts of products. Um, but, you know, not serious professional journalism. So I would advise you to, to avoid those sort of washed out pale colours. Uh, and at the other end of the spectrum, I would also say to avoid what I call gaudy colours or over bright colours like hot pink or fluorescent yellow or, you know, like highlighter pens, you know, like the, the, the green. I'm looking at my highlighter pen right here. It's kind of a green vibrant colour, like a traffic light almost, you know, that's too much. That's too much. So just keep the colours simple. It has to be easily consumed. Um, and I found this a couple of years ago, slide 16. They're called colour wheels. You might be familiar with these. And uh, the website is uh, at the bottom of, of slide 15. But just check these out. So this is complementary colours. Uh, so the idea is they can be top left, colours that can be opposite each other on the wheel, so red and green work together well. Or top right, they can, you can have what's called a triadic colour scheme. So green, purple and orange work together well, apparently. I don't particularly think so, but according to the experts they do. Or bottom left, you can have ones which are kind of close to each other, variations, blue, blue, green and green. Uh, and then what's called split complementary colours. Um, again, they don't really work for me, those. But just have a play with the, the colour wheel. Slide 17, there are some more examples of, of how you might want to think about it. But if you ever have any doubts, folks, go back. Golden rule, go back to the professional websites. Look at how Gary Young does it. Look at how George Monbiot does it. Look at Naomi's website. Look at Charla's website. Generally speaking, journalists, don't, with the exception of Angela, don't use a lot of colour. Uh, let's just have a look at one more, and then we'll have to pick up on Friday, because, um, as always, I have a class at one o'clock. So uh, slide 18, the text, don't forget, the number one 
principle of a journalistic website is they should be able to read your text easily. So don't use clever fonts. I call them swirly fonts. You know those crazy, you know, ornate fonts that sort of belong in the 17th century. Don't use them. Don't use, don't go to the other end of the spectrum and use what I call childish fonts, you know, like comic book and so on. Uh, again, a, a professional designer once told me, golden rule, don't use more than three standard fonts. Uh, on on any one page or in, in fact on the whole website don't don't go from Times New Roman on one page to Arial on another to Calibri on another to Helvetica on another just stick to three standard fonts make sure obviously just like a newspaper just like a website you use the largest fonts for titles you use large for subheads and the smaller for the text and um, also experiment with line spacing. I always say for print that it should be one and a half line spacing. So each line of text should be one and a half lines of text apart. Uh, standard obviously is single. Single might be okay for a website, but don't make your text too dense. Don't forget you, you, you've got plenty of room to play with. As always, avoid bold, underline and italic. As I always say, if you use the right word in your writing, you don't need bold, underline or italic or italic. And final point with text, don't just have what I call text heavy pages. A page which is just solid text is totally unreadable. It's not a book. It's, it, you can do it when it's a book, but not, not when it's a web page. So you need to balance and decide what mixture of text and space and images your pages have. So think of those three things working together, text, space and images. Do not cram it all together. Don't forget the first point on this slide, folks. It's the most important thing. Your text must be easily readable. Right, and apologies, I'm going to have to stop there because I've got to shoot to my next class. Has anybody got any burning questions about websites so far? No, good. Right, so what, what I want you to do, folks, between now and Friday is just spend some time checking out those websites on the Moodle page. There's seven to choose from. Um, Shannon has, uh, has very kindly given us Gary Young, so we've got, now got eight websites to look at. Find your own websites. Find the journalists that you admire, that you aspire to, to follow in their footsteps, and, and see how they do it. But I'm 90% sure that the design principles that other journalists use um, are the same that we've just discussed here. Because, you know, so you're not going to get massive marks for coming up with crazy radical uh, design concepts. You're going to get good marks for basically producing a professional standard website. Okay, as uh, as just once again, apologies for rushing through it, but I do have another class. It, it has been recorded. We'll come back to the PowerPoint on Friday. Uh, so see you all at 10 o'clock. First off, we'll have Angela telling us about her career. And then in the second half of the show, uh, we'll finish off website and then we'll talk about business plan. And then that will be another wonderful week of, uh, of uh, productive work. OK, any more questions before I dash, folks? OK, thank you. Sorry to rush. See you all on, um, on Friday.